Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Tonight we ask that in a very mighty way you invade this place. Make your presence known in an unusual way tonight. Let the saints be equipped. Let the church be mature. Let mighty men and women of God arise, O God, from this place. Reveal your glory. Multifaceted dimensions. And cause our hearts to be enlightened. Let your word break every stronghold. Tonight, let the sick be healed and let the oppressed be delivered. Let our destinies change forever. In the name of Jesus. It's in your glory I will stand. I will stand and lift my hand. It's in your glory I'll receive Every miracle you have for me It's in this glory we will stand In your glory, we'll receive every miracle you have. And the Balaka Brandos, he who has the Son has eternal life. The sun, so we have eternal life. Yes, we have the sun, so we have eternal life. We who have the sun, we have eternal life. I have the sun, so I have eternal life. your holy name, sing your praises forever, and I forget not your benefit. I bless your holy name, sing your praises. Ma 
Lord, we cry for a visitation. We do not want to be so familiar with your presence. We cry for a fresh Mighty one, we cry. We cry, Abba Father, hallowed be hallowed be But thou, O Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, O Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my voices and sing, but thou, Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head, but thou, Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter one more time. Jesus, we declare that you are the lifter of our heads. Everything that you have done in this place, we give you the glory for it. For the miracles, the healings, the signs, the wonders. No man can do these things except God be with him. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. Without your presence, there is nothing we have. Without your presence, we have no message. 
Your presence is a life transforming factor. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Prevail over us tonight, O oh God. We submit our spirits and our destinies. Let the refiner's fire build us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk up to two or three people. Just welcome them. Hallelujah. It's always a blessing. You cannot imagine how excited I am every week to bring God's the word of the Lord. And you see, as a man of God, your responsibility is not to be celebrated or build an empire for yourself. As a true minister of the gospel, your primary responsibility is to be an extension of the power, the life, and the glory of God. Let's look at a scripture. Jeremiah 23. Verse 4. Jeremiah 23. Verse 4. It says, And I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. It says, And I will set up shepherds. over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear they no longer are in dismay and that they neither they lack him saith the Lord and so when God anoints a man a minister of the gospel you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven. Not just any revelation you read around, but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building, changing, empowering the people. See, our ministration in the New Testament is that of the Spirit. Meaning, when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing, you are receiving more than information. Is that true? There is an activity. It's a transfer. This is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word. That while you are sitting right now listening to me, there is a spiritual transfer. Something is entering your spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. It says, And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Let me tell you something. Without the ministration of the spirit, every other thing we are doing is just noise. It is the ability to convey spiritual realities. Not just the English. Not just the grammar. Are you getting my point now? But there is an impartation upon your spirit man. And that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are doing. Without the spirit backing the word, there is no supply of grace to become. It says, as many as believed in him, even to them that believed on his name, he gave them what? Power to become. Not power to hear. Power to become. Meaning that when the word of God is taught in truth, it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good, it should activate something in your spirit and make you become it. 
Because the word of God is not a thing. The Greek word, word is logos, right? And Jesus, the word is called the living logos. He's a person. You can listen to my message, the living logos. Meaning, the ultimate desire of God is not for you to learn scripture. The ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture, light will enter you to become an epistle yourself. A written epistle, the apostle says. Hallelujah. So this is what we are here to do tonight. And I trust that the Lord will bless our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll share with us a few thoughts that the Lord put in my heart. And I trust that God will help us. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5. One of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of Christ, especially pastors, preachers, is that we have lost the spirit of the word. And I say this with a very heavy heart. There's so much of talking going on. Sunday after Sunday, talking. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I'm not against the theological understanding of the word. I'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word. But if all we have to give people is just information, just rema in terms of new discoveries, we will never be able to produce a victorious army. Hallelujah. It doesn't take being spiritual to have information. It just takes being passionate. You don't have to be spiritual. You don't have to wait on God to get spiritual information. You see, the distinguishing factor, let me tell you something. Many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There is a spirit that is behind scripture. One time the Lord opened my eyes. And when the Lord opened my eyes, I was in a vision and I saw a big, like an ancient door or a gate if I will call it. And when I looked closely, I found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors. Actually a door. Many smaller doors. Are you following me now? And on every one of those doors, a scripture was written. I saw the doors opening and closing. Meaning, behind the letter, behind the grammar, behind the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, there is a spirit waiting to transform people. The assignment, the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life. The spirit of life. Not just the spirit of truth. The spirit of life. He gives life to the information you are hearing. And then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now. So there is a lot of church going on. There is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings. But what we have done primarily as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing. So it's just about theological dissertations or Greek and Hebrew. Somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read Greek and Hebrew and express, you know, the words in Greek and Hebrew and bring new words, we think that the anointing is in the Greek or the anointing is in the Hebrew or the anointing is in the English or the communication. There is a spirit. There is a spirit. That's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed. There is a spirit. Listen, as I'm talking to you right now, there is a spirit that is compelling what I'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded. That's why you can bring somebody that is hardened, somebody that will even swear that I won't listen to God, I won't do anything. And when he sits down under this anointing, from the prayer to the worship, there is a spirit. There is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on. And all of a sudden, you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn. Probably even insulting the meeting. And yet he's silent. 
and then paying attention. Listen. I want to convince you that without the ministration of the spirit, everything we are doing in ministry is useless. Get this. Get this. Get this. There is a wrong, wrong understanding about impact and transformation. Many people wonder why you go to certain Christian circles and there is hardly any change. For 10 years, people can be in a church, but there is no notable transformation. The only thing is that they know the names of everybody. And while it's good to teach people things like, um, you know, accounting, timekeeping, other secular principles here and there, there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the Spirit. Not just being full of the Holy Ghost. Not just receiving the anointing. The ministration of the Spirit. The participation. That at every point in your dispensing of the word, there is a light. There is a life. That's the only way your words can transform people. Let me tell you something. I am always aware that it's a privilege for God's people to be gathered here week in, week out. Some persons have traveled from different states, different regions to be here. You cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a, a presentation of Bible or just a religious Bible study. It's more than that. That is the reason why, let me tell you something. It's good to listen to tapes. It's good to read books. But none of them can replace being in an atmosphere. There is something about the atmosphere. Are you getting what I'm saying? An atmosphere activates a lot of things. There is something about you sitting down. From the first time you come in and sit down, even before the service starts proper, there is already the ministration of, of the Spirit going on. Convictions are changing. Ideologies are shifting. Death is being replaced by life. The earthly is becoming the heavenly. Right? That revelation, listen, let me tell you. I've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress. I absolutely believe that before Jesus comes, you see, we've taught on the concept of immortality. There's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of Christ. But what we have not taught people it is a scriptural concept. The Bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory. That the mortal can become the immortal. That the natural, the terrestrial can translate. There is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That divine dimension, brothers and sisters, is what we are called to demonstrate. A believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you. If you are not convinced about what I'm telling you, you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom. I know that here and there because of our humanity, the attachment of this body, somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually. And so we preach sensually. We carry out all that we do sensually. But there is a spirit. There is a spirit. That is the one factor that makes ministry different from business. Or makes ministry different from a, a seminar. Right? That's the difference. We have lost this spirit in crusades. We have lost this spirit in conferences. And you see that people sit down and they never leave with that transformation. Can I tell you something? The ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic. It's about the presence of God changing you. Meaning, if we come here and all we do is to sing, you should still live transformed. Because you see, the, the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone. When you are sitting in an atmosphere, something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 
verse 11. And this is the record, or this is the testimony that God has given unto us what? Eternal life. The word here is zoe. I know we talk a lot about it. Eternal life is not life after death. Listen, listen. Eternal life is not life. It's not the life you receive after death. Right? What happens after death is the consummation. The consummation. Right? Eternal life is the divine life. God's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm. And the quality of that life, if it is of God, it should be able to conquer anything in this life, including death. But it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand. So we, in, in the kingdom, let me read the, the scripture, let me not go ahead of myself. It says, and this is the record that God has given unto us what? So it is clear from scripture that it has been given. But how is the technology of that life transferred? It says, and this life is where? It's in his son. Next verse. It says, he that had the son had that life. And he that had not the son of God had not life. Watch this. The Bible tells us, listen, my goodness. The primary purpose of receiving Jesus that means you're coming to Christ or you're coming accepting the Lordship of Christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of God gets to you the Bible says the life of God is hidden in the Christ himself right the Son of God so the way you receive that life is to receive the Son of God that's why we preach that's why souls must be won. So it's, it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone. It's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying now. Because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven, you would have left immediately you gave your life to Christ. So the technology is, of course, it secures your eternal destiny. But the Bible says God gave us life. But that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of God, so way, God's quality and class of life, you must embrace his son. Embracing the father will not give you that life. Hear me? Embracing an angel will not give you that life. Embracing revelation will not give you that life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must know what ministers that life. It says, and the life... The office of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is the only means through which that life can be communicated. How many people are in church? They've been in church for years, but they do not have this life of God. Because they have not embraced. They are aware that the Son of God exists. Are you getting what I'm saying? They are aware that he died, but they have not received of his life. And the Bible tells us that you receive. Now the question is, what exactly is that eternal life? What is eternal life really? What is eternal life? Is it, is it, um, is it a package that is given to us? Is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us? Is it a programming? What exactly is eternal life? I'll tell you. Eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of God in a man. That's exactly what eternal life is. Eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to Jesus. Eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living God to come and reside in you. The extension, 
as we call it in the Greek, Alos Parakletos, the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of Jesus, here and now in your life. So my mortal body, that if I come to Jesus Christ and I truly receive his son, that life, the only gate, that's why Jesus said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, right? So the spirit of life, the very Holy Spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son. This scripture is a clarification or an explanation of Galatians chapter 3, right? When you begin to read from verse 13 down, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. It says, be made a cause for us. Look at me. Let me explain something to you. Do you know what makes the Old Testament old? Look up, look up, look up. Let me explain something to you. Do you know what makes the Old Testament old? Or when the Bible talks of the old man, he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete. The spiritual language is old. Are you getting the point? So it's not old because of time. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You know in the earth, if, if we bought this two years ago, we say this is old, this is new. In the spirit, old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the Holy Spirit. That means an ideology is old to the degree to which the Holy Spirit is not involved in it again. The reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come. If the new one came and the Holy Spirit is not in it, it will still be old. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time. It is the very presence, the eternal life of God. That seed that conquers death, that conquers weakness. And the Bible so designed the body of Christ. Watch this. The body of Christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, for this cause, because people cannot discern the mystery, some are weak, some are sick, and some do sleep. Is that not in your Bible? It said there is a mystery of the body. The mystery of godliness, the Bible calls it, that Christ can dwell in a mortal body. He said if you do not discern it, you will be weak. You will be sick. And you can even sleep. Meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of God. But the, the, the factor is this. Um, in the kingdom, there are two realities. I want you to write this down. What I'm teaching you tonight is powerful. You will walk in the glory of God in supernatural dimensions if you understand what I'm saying. There are two realities that every believer contends with or walks with. Number one is the reality in Christ. The reality in Christ. The beginning of the experience of the believer in the New Testament starts in Christ. Outside of Christ, there is no initiation into the realities of the New Testament, right? The, the, the whole New Testament starts, the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Never alone. For with God, all things are possible. Outside of him, many things are not possible. For in Christ, we are complete. For in Christ, we are perfected. Are you getting the point now? But then there are realities in Christ. For instance... We are seated in heavenly places, the Bible tells us, in Christ. The other reality is the experience of that truth here and now. The experience of that truth here and now. You can call it the reality in Christ and then the experiential reality.
The Bible tells us all through the New Testament all that we have become in Christ. Many times we do not understand why Apostle Paul when he makes certain statements about the believer he adds in Christ. And then we do not understand his communications. Some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in Christ, it means that the, the experience of it is manifest here and now. That's not true. Paul himself speaking to the Hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify, right? And he tells us certain things. He tells us we do not yet see all things. Let, let's turn there. Paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth. Hebrews, are you blessed tonight? I have the sun and I have eternal life. He who has the sun has eternal life. Two verse seven and eight. Let's look at seven and eight. Hebrews two, verse seven and eight. He says, thou hast made him, remember, Paul was quoting from David. It was David, the son of Jesse, right? The king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this. He said, to none of the angels, right? As he said at any point, thou art my son, you know, this and that. He did not put the world in subjection to any angel. And then the Bible says, talking about man now, he said, you have made him or in... in, in uh, talking about Jesus now in his earthly work. He says, you have made him a little lower than the angels. The word there was mistranslated. It's supposed to be uh, angelio, not necessarily like the beings, but it's an expression of God himself. Many times you see the Bible use the word angel to mean the very Lord himself. Is that not true? Many times in scripture, you will see that uh, and certain times the word angel is written in italics. Meaning that there is more explanation to it. It doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the Lord. But God himself. So it says, the word there is supposed to be, thou hast made him a little lower than Eloha, God himself. The almighty. So Jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth. Right? It says, thou hast crowned him. Now he's talking about his coronation. This was the coronation that David saw. The Lord said to my Lord, right? Sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So he says it here that thou crownest him with what? Glory and honor. And you did set him over the works of your hand. Verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing. That it, Listen, I hope you realize that in the New Testament, you are not anything until Christ is first it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So every time you see the Bible talking about man, find out whether Christ has become that thing. If Christ has not become it, because he must be the firstborn in all things. Meaning, the dimension that the Christ did not show us a possibility of getting, there is no point trying to get there. This is what I'm saying. Are you getting the point? We can contend even more than the earthwork of Jesus because he said this, verily, verily I say unto you, he that believes in me, is that not in your Bible? The works that I do, in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels. If I stayed longer, I would have unveiled more possibilities. Now if you have my life, I authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities. And immortality is one of the possibilities in that life. Divine health is one of the possibilities in that life. The ability to live supernatural, though natural, is one of the possibilities. We must be able to stretch the possibilities. What are the contents of this Zoe life? What does it consist of? What are the benefits? Why should I want to receive the life of God? It's like a product you are marketing to me. Convince me, why should I want it? What is the excellency of God's life over my natural life? Are you getting what I'm saying? So the Bible tells us 
speaking about man. But that man was not just man like you. That man was first the man Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I know that when you read this scripture, he says, who is man that thou art mindful of him? That man is not just talking about the natural man. He's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory. Because he died as the only begotten son. Then he resurrected as the first of the begotten. And from there he had 120 other begotten sons. And from there there are many begotten sons. So Jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father. By the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too. Are you, are you understanding what I'm teaching you? And so the Bible tells us that when you receive of that son, you receive of that life. That life is like a drug, the presence of the Holy Spirit. The moment he finds expression, certain reactions begin to happen. Watch this. He opens you up to the realities. So Jesus in the New Testament becomes what we call our pattern man. Jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the Zoe life is. Are you getting it? He was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the Zoe life. So when we saw the things that he did, we saw the mighty things that he did. The first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things. And then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that I go. For if I do not go, I cannot send the comforter. He will come and continue. He will be an extension of my ministry. The Holy Spirit is to us today what Jesus was to the 12 disciples. Exactly what Jesus was to the 12 disciples. The Holy Spirit is to us today. That's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven. There are only two thrones in heaven. But we agree that there is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because the third throne is in us. There is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again. Are you, are you getting that now? It is him that takes us to the God class. The presence of the Holy Spirit. Are we, are we understanding what I'm teaching tonight? So the realities in Christ and then our experience of that reality. The Bible says something very powerful here. It said, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, right? For in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing that is not under him. At what point did this happen to man? Jesus himself said this. When he resurrected, what did he say? He said, all hail, he told the disciples. It says, all authority, exousia, delegated power has been given to me. When he was in the earth, all authority, let me say something that looks controversial. When he was in the earth, all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him. I hope you know. Absolutely. That's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power, he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that jurisdiction. Is it not in your Bible? So when Jesus resurrected, he now said, now, the scope, a coronation has happened to me. Right? The same way it happened to Adam, that dominion mandate has been restored. And he said, now, all authority has been given. He says, go in that light. In other words, in Christ, the Bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named, both in this life and in the life to come. That's what the apostle was trying to explain there. But he leaves a disclaimer. He says, but now, everybody say, but now. Are you seeing? In Christ, all things have been perfected. But now, the experience of that reality, he says, but now, we see not. What is Paul saying now? Paul, you just told us now that in Christ, all things are finished. Is that not true? When Jesus hung on the cross, he said it is finished. Look at this. The thieves that were on the cross, one was telling him, ah, paraphrasing now, 
we saw you do a lot of miracles is it that you can't bring us down from the cross another person was saying when you get here so they were all thinking of a lot of things but jesus said today he was giving him a revelation that in christ there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Every sinner in hell today, from the time Jesus came, the price for their salvation has been paid. Why are they in hell? As merciful as the mercy of Jesus is. Are you getting the point now? So there is a difference between realities in Christ and the experience. The realities in Christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes i am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality Is God speaking to us now? So most believers just see, it, oh, in Christ. And then this is how they respond. God forbid, I have seen it in the Bible. I will never be sick. I will never be broke. And then you are getting broke. You are getting sick. Because what you saw is not a lie. But the ability to translate it here and now. Have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall what? How many people are casting out devils? How many do you know? In my name, they will speak with new tongues. How many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and seemingly it did not come? How many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence? The Bible says heal the sick, right? Raise the dead, cast out devils. It says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned, let me tell you sincerely, at how distant we are from the things we talk about, the things we claim, and the experience of the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is too much talk in the body of Christ. We must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand. Because there is too much talk about who God is, what he can do. We make such bold statements about God. But when it comes to bringing God in the scene, bringing his power here and now, we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves. The Bible says, for instance, Jesus Christ, the same when? Today and forever. How many preachers do you know have said that? How many of us men of God have said that? How many of us have been able to reproduce that reality? 
we must admit that there is something we are not understanding we must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing and let me tell you where we are missing it this is it romans chapter 8 let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously and if we do not change a lot is going to go wrong Eight verse five. Eight verse five. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse five. Everyone read. It says, For they that are after the flesh, do what? Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse six. For to be what? stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So a man can watch oppression in his life and say, no, I went to school. What, what sort of oppression? I mean, if, if you fail, you fail. It's not any demon, anything. You see that? And then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness. That all that you see is not all that there is. There are many people, for instance, who look up and say there is no God because they are carnally minded. They, they reason from the sensual realm. Let me tell you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in a bit, and I teach you principles, we just finished having financial principles, but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format, we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce God into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible. Whereas, the Bible tells us that as you are speaking to people, the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death. How do you explain that mathematically? So there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is, this is this, this is that. You see, it happens at times. There are women who, based on the way they are formed, they don't have wombs. You just happen to be one of them. God is faithful and all of that. And then you sit down and believe that that's how it is. The Bible says to be carnally minded. Let me tell you the truth. If we do not grow, I'm not against intellectualism, right? There's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance. Um, that is true.
but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i, I have studied a lot of people there is no man who works based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who changed the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just i, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a plane of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say kai i beg jare we are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid me i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters there are realities i got a testimony from i got a testimony from um administration we went for in kaduna that 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 blessed me one of the pastors um came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when i went for the meeting a woman was pregnant brothers and sisters watch this at least biology tells us i'm not a doctor there are doctors here um so how the child is supposed to be formed eventually for reasons they cannot explain the child started turning mysteriously no the child does not turn mysteriously something turned it let me tell you the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120 there are spirits that are millions of years you call satan a liar you are right you call him a deceiver you are right you call him a fool you are very wrong satan is old are you hearing that absolutely you know sometimes the way people just talk me god forbid my spirit can do this and that and that it's not all about this it's not and and while you are talking the realm of the spirit is just watching you how old do you know in bible days all of us are not even up to teenagers right now right yet the ancient spirit of god gives
gives us a prescription about how to live. And he says, if you want life and peace, be spiritually minded. Be spiritually minded. Do not let education, do not let intellectualism, money or anything, take away that spiritual factor. It has nothing to do with a man of God. It is the key to life and peace. We have thrown the Holy Spirit. We feel he's only relevant in church. Right? So when you go to your job and all of that, people say, now let's, let's, let's be real. Let's be real. While the, the Bible says, I am the truth. I am reality. When God began to build and train me, God made it a necessity. And he let me know that forever in my earth work, the Holy Spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact, any transformation. You see that? For me, the spirit of the living God is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that God will like you. He is what you call eternal life. If you are not aware of that, be aware. Eternal life is not what he brings. His very presence is the life of God. Jesus never became the Christ. He was the son of the carpenter. He could die. That's why his parents ran away with him. But when the spirit of God came, he made him the Christ. So when the Bible says in Christ, it's not just saying in Jesus alone. In Jesus, yes, but together with the spirit. Look at what we have taught people about faith today. Look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of Christ that we call faith. Right? We teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo. That's why it's not working. Let me tell you, faith is a product of an encounter. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing, do you hear what you read? Answer me. You see, we need to examine. He was talk, It was a spiritual language. He was not even just talking about hearing with the ear. There is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings. And that's what produces true faith. Because when the Bible says hearing and hearing by the word, at that time, there was no books like this. King James had not authorized this. So what did they call the word? The days that are coming will be fierce. The days that are coming will be spiritual. Right now, have you seen the way the world is going lately? There is no embarrassment about spirituality again. Is that true? Everybody is opening up. It used to be in secrecy before. But right now, there is an open confrontation. It's like everybody is saying, Kai, I'm not hiding it again. I'm gay. Simple. Kill me if you will kill me. I've, it's not today. It has been like that. Another person saying, it's not only you, two or four, two. Another person saying, let me tell you, I've not been a real Christian. This is my charm. Oh, yeah. You see, everybody is confessing one by one. One by one. The meaning of that is darkness is about to reveal itself publicly. Right? And it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim. Someone is building a house with blocks and cement. When you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week, one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two cores of blocks. It will scatter everything. What sort of wind is that? Is it now wind started? How many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say, they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes, they see images of spirits doing things from the sea. Minutes later, you see all the animals running. They are still spiritual, except human beings. Disaster hardly meets animals there. They run away and leave us. We are there trying to make money. We are there and we are dying like chickens. This is 
is a spiritual generation. Listen, this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious, to be spiritually minded. The Holy Spirit is the advantage of this generation. I am convinced that we are the generation that will return Christ. Yes, I am convinced. The Bible specifically talks about a number of things. That, as we call it, that Omega generation. There are certain happenings that will characterize our generation. Hallelujah. That we discern spiritual things. Let me give you an instance. Hold on, let me explain something. How many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry? in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage, right? There are so many people who now challenge their pastors, challenge everybody. Are you the only one who will preach? Are you the only one? We have a democratic church that can vote out, throw out pastors because of policies. Have you read in First Samuel, I can't remember, I think maybe chapter 15 or 13, one time when Saul, is that true? When Samuel told Saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly, is that true? He was coming to make a sacrifice. They gathered the people, it's in your Bible. And then Saul told, I mean, Samuel said he's coming at so and so time. And he didn't come. And they waited for him, they waited for him, they waited for him. After they waited for him, people were scattering. And the ego of the king, Saul, was, was at stake. And he said, Kai, this guy is not coming. Let me what? Offer the bond offering. As soon as he offered the bond offering, Samuel came. And he said, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, honestly. I was afraid. It's not like I wanted. I need to. I didn't want to do it. The people were disturbing me. And since you were not around, I thought since I was a king, let me do it. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had allowed me to come, God would have established your throne. So it would have now been son of Saul, not son of David. He said, because you have done this, the kingdom is taken to you. For God has found another man after his heart. Just for violating the priesthood. How many people violate the priesthood today? And they don't care. Right? All kinds of people. Any man can get up at any point, lambast any man of God. Write any article and speak and believe he will go scot-free. Go and read your Bible. It's because we have become carnally minded. We don't even know what it means to be a man of God. We think being a man of God is choosing the vocation of preaching. Right? So that when one walk or the other doesn't walk, or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative, you just say, oh, it's okay, at least you are preaching. You see, this is our mindset. So, we, do not, we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar. There were times in the Bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things, they left it there. Have you read about Uzzah in the Bible? I'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards. The Bible says we do not discern the body of Christ. And many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate. Right? Remember that there was a time when the ark of God was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uzzah for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you, you are our younger brother. Don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in, in, in five months, God can open you to fountains of blessings, you know, they look around and say, eh, I know. It's not like I'm saying God cannot do it, but you see, 
we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today. Right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals? Today, if we were before the Red Sea, this is what Apostle Joshua Selma would have done. Engineers, where are you? The spirit of Bazalel. And then we'll start constructing a bridge. We're saying that if I'm a prophet, in five years we'll cross this Red Sea. See that? That's how we would have worked. That's how much we have reduced God. That's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come. And we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start, architects come. Let's start, and then where are the kingdom financiers? And then prayer department, where are, and then we keep praying. And God says, is that all you need? And then after five years, we say, now you will cross the bridge slowly. And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by Apostle Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Because we call that the Old Testament. We laugh at them. We even say they are a shadow of us. Are you joking? Read Hebrews 11. There are men who in their humanity, we cannot even touch their shoes. Yet, they, that's the Old Testament. We are very quick to say it's old. We have done away with it. But we have not done one-tenth of the things that they have done. It's in your Bible. People invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening on around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? Look at, look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true? And do a lot of carnal things. There is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural or and, 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 and that of unbelievers. If I stand right now and I minister to Sam and he falls under the anointing, people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft. Where did we leave our spirituality? Is it not in your Bible that Jesus with the divine life walked through people on a cliff? They were trying to kill him. He walked through them like a spirit. Where is that generation? I wanted to show us a video. It's just that um, we, we, we didn't have it. I didn't discuss with the media. Would have shown us that video um, of Patricia King, right? I know they don't have it. They may not have it now. Otherwise, you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven. Real oil, physical oil. You would have seen the foot of real angels. That you are not pressing into God doesn't mean some other people are not. The divine life. We shout Zoe. We shout Zoe. But there is nothing Zoe about her life. If they shoot me, I die. Zoe. Right? Every, ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me. Zoe. Now, I don't say this in a derogatory way. I'm saying this to challenge us. I guarantee you, if we learn how to receive that Zoe life, you will watch HIVs get healed as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. 
I look at people line up for counseling and I plead in my heart because I say shame on us. It means we are doing very small. A sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted, they should now go out and begin to transform people. But today we say, wow, I had a crowd, hundreds of people, to, to mean that ministry is moving forward. Wrong parameters. Because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard. Who is God speaking to tonight? Where have you reduced God? Let me tell you. One day, maybe I'll come in the night, I'll bring a chair here, one coin on here. We'll just sit down and we'll discuss. And I'll share with you some of my encounters when God began to work with me. Some of you, if I share it as you are seated now, you've seen me every day. You've even eaten with me, but you will not believe it. Because you say it's a lie. Encounters with angels. All kinds of spiritual encounters because I believe in him. I believe in him. I'll never forget the first time I had the audible voice of God. Let me tell you something. If you hear God, you must have faith. You see that? It's not about maybe I'm trying to calculate. You must have faith. Listen, at the, at the Mount of Transfiguration, when Elijah and Moses appeared, what did Peter do? Peter recognized them immediately. Had he ever seen them? Who told him? He said, what? I see three people. It's a privilege. That means I have questions to ask. Let's prepare three beds. One for Elijah, one for Moses, because he thought they came to pass the night with Jesus and discuss a lot of things. When an angel appeared to Mary, Mary was not afraid. Mary was a natural occurrence. It was the salutation she was afraid of, not the angel. Today, if somebody says, I seen an angel, say, I beg that angel, where you think angels are just like that? Yet the Bible says, Are they not ministering spirits? I'm showing you why we have become carnal. We threw away the Holy Spirit. We are gradually kicking the Holy Spirit out in a bid to do what we call word, 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 word. Right? Word, word, word. Just the word. Give me the word and, and don't give me anything else. There are even people who reject Jesus and say, just give me Bible. Give me Bible, Jesus, go. Once it's not Bible, even Jesus should go away. That would be saying. And the devil likes that theology. If it is Bible you want, Zondavan, keep publishing. New versions keep coming out. And we keep carrying the Bible. And we convince ourselves that because we are holding Bible and reading it, we are growing in the world. But we are becoming carnal. That's why death is rampant. It is that carnality. Do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us? Is that true? Witchcraft in the village is not a shock. An average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft. So if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear, he will believe it. But in the church, ah, if I disappear here now, now, in this place, finally the article will be complete. The article you have been writing, you will pay New Nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it. Confirm. Hey. Which is on suit. Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like a Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church calls spiritual growth prosperity. Since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard, we have left it and then remedied it with money. So when I come in with a nice suit and I come and say, am I, is the word not working? Let me tell you it is. If that's what you think, you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of 100,000. Which, which pastor or which Christian can hardly do that in Nigeria? There are people lavishing resources. We have reduced ourselves and matched our spirituality. So if I come out with a jeep, if there are five jeeps that are lined up here, you say, man, God is in Koinonia. What? Five jeeps is here. Oh. In Bible days, 
men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit. One man will threaten a nation, not a politician, but Elijah, not in a radio station. He made a declaration to the heavens. He vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said, me, I speak. There will not be rain. Not God revealed to me. I stand in my office over this territory. And I said, there will not be rain. And he went to bed. It was by sorcery. Jezebel found out he was the one. And she swore to him, he said, how many men of God have disgraced themselves on television? How many men of God have disgraced their ministries in newspapers? How many men of God predicted that 2012 is, is rapture? Huh? How many? You see how we, we, we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years. Instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation, we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves. Gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more. Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity. Because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healings and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We made money and make two and two together. And then we now say it's working. It's not working. No. We have to be, admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church, what will you tell them? I know what you will tell them. I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't, you are liars. We have must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of God's people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son. And that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it. But there is a revival that is coming. This will be a revival of the spirit himself. When the spirit of God will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us. The spirit of God in these days. The Lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week. I've been under an intense anointing right from when I finished the, the financial series. And the Holy Ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people. As many who are interested, there will be such a move of the Spirit. I'm telling you, God will begin to tutor people. And the more you see him, the more you will know preachers are lying. The more you encounter him, the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars. The Lord is revealing this to me. This is how God trained me. God taught me so many things. Secrets in the Bible. There are times that I will, the Lord will be visiting me and his presence, physical cloud. I'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about. Real cloud, like a fog, will fill the room. And I'll lie down here and the pages of my Bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures. I hope you believe it. Hallelujah. We have reduced God. We have reduced God. It's, this is too bad. To an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up, people look and they say, Kai, who knows him? Look at how you put pressure on men of God. 
people come for miracle service, we have to be asking them, where are you coming from? So that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. It's a shame. It says, he that has a son has life. Has life. Look at what Jesus did. An example of what we should become. Jesus, five loaf and two fish, he multiplied it. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Everywhere we go, we are doing bad or at least average. And yet we claim to have his spirit. There are people who even brag and say, I have the spirit of Jesus without measure. Where is it? Where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday. And I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here. You have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you? How many people don't pray? They come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense. I am a prayer warrior, but there is a, there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer. It follows their teachings. It's like a spirit. It's like a finishing on your words. If you are a man of the altar, it truly, that fire, it's not just the shouting. There is a communication of life. How many people claim they are prayer warriors and they stand and speak? And while they are speaking, you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically. Because there is no life that is coming. The question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me? Many of us did not start like this. God is speaking to us. Many of us, when we started, we were spiritual. We meant business with God. Eventually, as we started getting some results in our lives, we have thrown the Holy Spirit out. Now we are left with letters. Convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures, it means we are growing spiritually. Do you not see the need in our world today? There are people with HIV, cancer. There are people in need of the Zoe life that we claim to have. We claim to have Zoe. I am an ambassador of the kingdom. Then demonstrate it. He said, when I came to you, I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, this is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around. And we give all kinds of explanations for it. You not see what is happening to the body of Christ. But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials. Where in a sleep, you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you, right, I want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power. And when you wake up in the morning, like, like Solomon, an intelligence you cannot account for, all of a sudden, this is how, this is how God trained me, oh. This is how God trained me. I remember a time in my life when I would sleep in the night. This happened for almost two months. And at least one of God's generals will come to me in dreams. Explaining to me their perspectives. I remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives. I remember a man called Peter Tan. The first time I would meet that man was in a vision. The first time I ever saw Apostle Paul, it was in a vision. I didn't even know he was the one. 
I just saw a man who was short and bald headed after speaking to me. Then I asked, who are you? And he didn't respond to me. He moved a while and then he turned and said, Paul, the first time I would see the picture on the internet, I said, this is the man I saw. Yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. The name Koinonia was a revelation. It's not that I just sat down and said, Kai, what should we call it now? No, no. Right now, everything we do is sensual and carnal. The exact blueprint and the things that we're doing in this ministry were a revelation. A revelation by God. It was the spirit of God that revealed to me the secret of church growth. Now, I'm not saying I'm throwing away materials and all of that. It's good. I've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves. But I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Let me have somebody here. Just one person. Anybody. We're a visitor. We're a pastor. came all the way. Oh, you served in Zugawa and you are here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with you. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then when you come for koinonia, oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you. And, and all those things we say, I, I love you. You are my all in all. You are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally, literally, to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you including revealing himself there was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said who do men say i am one day the holy ghost will ask you who do men say i am say yeah you are the spirit of this you are the and then he says who do you call me and he said i don't know you and he says now right my name is the spirit of life and to you that becomes a revelation at once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartation when was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately, in the kingdom... You must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple, your temple now, not a building, is filled with his glory. And songs begin to come. Look at what musicians write. Nonsense. They, they write songs that don't bless anybody. They just come up with songs. The reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people. Who are activating multiple streams of income. When was the last time you stood in his presence. And you began to worship. Until your worship became a song. And you touched a depth in the spirit. That resonated in your spirit. When was the last time you went to minister. Man of God. And you stood in that meeting. And when you finished people were shaking. They could not explain what happened. They knew that something heavenly, like the dew of the morning came upon them. They may not even remember what you thought, but they knew they carried the spirit. 
When was the last time because of your teaching someone just turned and said, Lord, I will seek you. And lock yourself three days. Do that today in our generation. And people say you are over-spiritualizing things. Oh. God is not like that. This guy came all the way from where? From, from Jigawa State. To come for a meeting. Because there is a hunger. It's not a conference. It's not a convention. But hunger brought him. Right? God must show us something in this generation. Otherwise, these games that we are playing will end up frustrating us. God must show us something. That's my cry as a man of God. I cry to God and I say, Lord, I don't want to do the ordinary. There is something you've got to show me. That's why I love my secret place. Those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street eating granola and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face. My relevance is tied to his glory. My ability to translate the realities in Christ. Let me tell you something. My, my goal, I've seen it in visions, but they have not happened. I saw one time in a vision. Let me share with you one vision that I had. One time, I, I say it jokingly, but truly, truly, I had a vision. And a ghastly motor accident happened. Ghastly motor accident. As it was happening, it's like I was caught up from somewhere. A physical location with my body. And all of a sudden, I appeared there. And it was just like a shadow like this. Just passed through those dead bodies. And including the car, there was a sound like the car, the way it hit, the impact. It came back as though nothing had happened. Ah, may God bring us to those days. May God bring us to those days. May God bring us to those days. A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. You invoke the power of creation, the soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible where you see that many things happen to people? Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do his best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. Even if you are not interested, there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit. For you to do that, you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry. Because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension. But how many people are that willing? Bless you. How many people are that willing? How many people are that willing to see the power of God? Transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now. I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach, I don't like people turning to me and saying, man of God, your message was powerful. Powerful in what? I want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that. I want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming. Not just that a great man of God visited a place. That's not enough. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has this divine life. But the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ. It must be translated to find expression. The more of God's life and God's glory 
transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life, the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. And then you become, as I would say, the envoys of his presence, carriers of his glory, carriers of his power. Then you will see the eyes of the blind open. Then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped. Hallelujah. While I was ministering over the weekend, there was a woman who, I don't know if they went to wash her ear or something, and then the ear was blocked during the workers' conference of CBC. And I called the woman out, and standing face to face, I said, I can either ruin this woman's life with lies or give her something that is of the truth. One time, Benny Hinn was laying hands on people and they were falling down. And Ora Roberts looked at him and said, Benny, don't just lay hands on them. He said, give them something. Oh, fine. Can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now? Media is ready with the video. Okay, media. Just, just play. Guys, maybe you can sit down and then after that, you come up. Let's, let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video. And um, it's a video of the supernatural. It's to spoil you, and then I'll come up and, and, and wrap up very quickly. Uh, we're in San Juan, Puerto Rico, where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place. The Lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways, angelic visitation, uh, you, very unique signs and wonders, which we'll actually show you in a few moments. You'll be absolutely astounded at what the Lord is doing. But it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for God. There seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved, healings, deliverances, miracles, all those good things with people deepening in their worship and, and loving the word of God. And so it's a, it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out. So we're at the House of uh, Restoration and Mercy with Pastor Dennis Roja, and uh, it's just awesome what is taking place. Pastor Dennis is one of the most humble people that I have ever met. He's so precious, has just a small uh, work and a very humble work. It reminds me of, of, of where Jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things. Um, Pastor Dennis uh, was uh, in, in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him, had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head, and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here uh, because uh, we just dunked them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave uh, to Pastor Dennis in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it is filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out comes back in. 
uh, right now in the current church that he's in, that he has a Bible open on the podium, and oil just fills the pages of the Bible. It's filling the pages of the Bible, and uh, little gemstones, little rough-cut diamonds are falling out of the Bible onto the podium. And then as he squeezes the Bible, the oil comes out, copious amounts of oil. This particular oil smells like myrrh. It's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it, and it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has. And at the same time, these kind of um, manifestations are happening. In fact, he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church, off the beams, onto the floor, onto the seats, and it's just nonstop, continuous pouring out of oil. At the same time, these manifestations are taking place. Um, there's souls being saved. There's people being healed. Intense worship and prayer. Uh, uh, deliverances. People are being set free. This is truly a move of God. And that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. It must bring our focus back onto him. We will get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor. And that's when he first noticed the prince. He was so excited. The Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited and the prints that were on the floor, the footprints, were actually the footprints of that angel. They're about 16 to 20 inches long, I believe. And um, then uh, he had to go away the cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way. And on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage, I don't think, does it justice, but when you're here, you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room. And so it's really an amazing time. Uh, he was also at a, uh, a, a prayer meeting with five men praying. And they were uh, praying, and as they prayed, the Lord visited with an audible voice. And with the audible voice, the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew. And Pastor Dennis said, well, why are you giving it to me then? Because I'm a Gentile. And the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, a supernatural token of the 12 uh, tribes of Israel, the gemstones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel and that he had an assignment for him to do in that way and so then the gemstones uh, uh, came just dropped over the next month they start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st he had all 12 stones with the amber one being the last one when you see them in, 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 in person they're just brilliant and causes a worship an adoration in your heart an awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them. Absolutely outstanding. 1,200 gemstones, over 1,200 gemstones have fallen. The 12 uh, special stones that were given to him uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing in intercession before the Lord. And the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel, I believe. And uh, many other signs and wonders, such as the oil and the, the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil. But all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is holy 
devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. People don't understand. They think he's of a cult or whatever. But I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied in Acts chapter 2, he said, In the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to, it's not just get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days, we'll just come and we'll dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that he has done in time past. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. It's to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to morning and marriage and power and mundane things. Thank God for these things. We just finished a financial series. But let me tell you the truth. God is looking for revivalists. God is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with. And I've made myself available. God knows with my entire life. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, spirit of the deep. Mighty on your throne. Oh, sing. Oh, sing. Oh, sing. You are mighty on your throne. Wait for the spirit of the deep and we. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life, the divine life, the incorruptible.
veritable seed of the word of God. We want to become epistles of power. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Spirit of the deep, we cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. We invoke the ancient spirit of the Lord Most High. Lord, we are a generation that will embrace you. Break forth. You ancient Zion King, we cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, you ancient Zion King, cry out, Kadosh, we cry out, Kadosh. Fountain of the deep. Shake a ta ta There are impartations going on in this place. Leke te ke te ka ta. Break forth. Thou spirit of the Lord. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on the throne. We cry out, Kadosh. We cry out, Kadosh. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep. The spirit of revival, apostolic signs and wonders. The spirit of prophecy. The spirit of power, the spirit of territorial impact, the spirit of encounters, open visions, visions of heaven. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Sing, you ancient Zion's king, cry out, cry 
adores You are mighty on your throne Enough of nominal Christianity Enough of powerless Christianity Enough of faking it In the name of faith There is a substance And this life is in his son The Zoe life The divine life the energy, the ability of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord that will bring awakening, signs and wonders, miracles and breakthrough. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. We sing. Zion steam cry out Kadosh you are mighty on your throne break forth the spirit of the deep cry out in our midst oh God let the spirit of adoption cry Abba Father Abba Father let that cry of revival, of a ministry of power, a ministry of the spirit that can change lives. We will not deviate from the part of the apostles. We will not deviate from the part of the prophets. We will not deviate from the path of spiritual progress. We will not deviate. We refuse to bend. We refuse to conform to the powerless dissertations of men. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Say, you are mighty on your throne. from tonight that you will never minister death to people again make up your mind that if at all you speak that you will speak as an oracle with power make up your mind that if you teach you teach as one who has touched heaven make up your mind that if you sing tonight you will sing as an oracle of grace Enough of powerlessness. Enough of ministrations without impact, without transformation. Press for one minute. We'll soon round up, but press. life I need power in my life 
I'm tired of faking it. I want the Zoe life. I have received the Son. Lord, let the life, let the realities in Christ be manifest. Let the realities in Christ be manifest. I'm tired of a powerless ministry. must walk conscious from today if you have received the son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. the God that answers all flesh. showing me a vision. I'm seeing I'm seeing a vision I'm seeing a vision and in this vision I'm seeing chains. This is what I'm seeing. Before I even start the mass prayer, I'm seeing chains and 
those people are affected, the power of God is going to begin to come upon them, inside and outside. I'm seeing chains. This is the spirit of delay. I'm seeing delay written in the atmosphere. Delay. Delay. I'm going to begin to pray. Listen, there are people whose lives and destinies have been held bound by the spirit of delay. By the spirit of delay. No matter where you are, inside or outside, it's like a force an energy of the spirit i want to help those people outside here lift your hands just keep your hands lifted inside and outside just lift your hands the lord is asking me to stretch my hands towards you and as i stretch my hands towards you and begin to speak it's like fire the power of God will begin to come upon such people. Those who are outside, you can stretch your hands just over your, your various projectors. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that spirit, I speak to you in the realm of the spirit. You have held the destinies of men and women. You have held the destinies of families. But the Bible says upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. And the sons of Jacob will possess their possession. Therefore, I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak every spirit of delay right now, right now, right now. I stretch my hands by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I stretch it right now. Bring them out. Say, yeah, of multiplied grace. I stretch my hand. The angels of the, of the Lord are moving road to row, road to row, road to row. It will get to your turn. Inside and outside, road to row. If that's not your situation, it will not affect you. But you will never stand the power of God. If this is one of the reasons God brought you here. Right now, I stretch my hands. Outside, lift your hands. The angels of the Lord are moving. Lord, every row, every row, I keep my hands stretched. That devil of delay, you must leave. You must leave. You must leave. The second overflow, God is touching people there. The second overflow, like fire, is coming upon people. The second overflow, that spirit of delay. Your time is up tonight. Your time is up tonight. Maka para tosotosh, embrekete leko sheketa. There's a lady wearing white hair tie. The anointing of the spirit is causing that delay. That delay right now. That delay right now. Right now, right now. Right now. It's a spell. It's like a charm. I'm seeing it on the heads of people. I command that spell. That charm of delay. You must leave. You must leave. You must leave. I tell you, no spirit will stand the power of God tonight. No, you must let them go. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I come against you. I come against you. I come against you. Delay is a dangerous thing. It traps your life so that when you ought to move and make significant progress, 
it will hold you bound. There are many lives and destinies that are tied down. Families. Please lift your hands. The Lord is telling me that he wants to visit the root of witchcraft in families. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Because the power of God will move in a mighty way. There are families here, hear me. You love God, but you do not know what is at the root of the tragedies of the families. There are spirits. There are covenants. There are fraternities with darkness that have kept families bound. It may not even be your fault. You are inheriting the wickedness of men. But tonight, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. 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 As I speak over your life, again, the Lord is going to be ministering to families. It may not have anything to do with you as a person. Some of you, you will step into visions immediately and begin to see a lot of destruction and havoc going on. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now. Inside the first overflow, the second overflow across the road, every family that is under the influence of any satanic manipulation, Lord, you will not only identify them, they must be free. At the count of three, I want you to shout, I am free. Are you ready now? One, two, three. All tasks, all tasks, all tasks, all tasks. I call you by your name and I curse you by the God of heaven. I call you by your name. Altars in Benway State. Altars in Kogi State. Altars in Kaduna State. Altars in the West. Altars in the East. My goodness. Shekete Kotokete. Rekete Tekete. Rekete Kota. Every local government, every state, I set fire on those altars. Fire, 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 fire on those altars. Fire on those altars. Every covenant with the waters every covenant with the air every covenant with the earth every covenant of darkness tying families i declare that this is your time of jubilee i send the word of judgment i send the word of judgment Hallelujah. I wish the Lord can open your eyes to see the mighty things that are happening. Mighty things that are happening. Hallelujah. Listen. Something very strange will start happening here now. Listen. Listen to me. Because I just saw a vision like a bunch of keys. It just dropped on the ground. Listen. This, this is a sign of access in the spirit. The Lord showed me a vision and I saw in the spirit a bunch of keys. Now it's not for everybody, but I'm about to pray. Once it comes on you, except God did not call me, you will see doors open. 
is called breakthrough. Lift your head. I stand under this apostolic anointing. And in the name of Jesus, every destiny that needs this breakthrough at the count of three, receive it, receive it. Take it now. 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 I distribute those keys in the spirit. I distribute those keys inside and outside. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of the eternal covenant. Breakthroughs. 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 The opening up of destinies. The opening up of destinies. The opening up of destinies. Listen, those of you outside, I want you to hear me because the Holy Spirit is going to do something now. The Lord asked me to come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want count three. My goodness, there is such anointing in this place. And I see the angels, the Lord. The moment you count three, I'm going to start moving across this crowd. And the power of God will start falling on people. Whatever has locked your destiny, it must open it right now. Are you ready now, those outside? Please believe we are not playing games. Father, in the name of Jesus, may the angels move in this crowd. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, shout at one, two, three. Receive it right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. I stretch my hands as I move across. Let an anointing come. As I pass your row, as I pass your row, you will stand it. As I pass your row, an anointing, an anointing. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. Take it now. I stretch my hands. Take it, take it. This side, receive it. Take it now. 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 I stretch my hands. Take it now. Take it now. Everyone in this row, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Take it now. All those here, there is an angel of the Lord standing on your row. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Just allow me to pass your row. As I'm coming, there are angels walking with me. As I'm coming, the power of God will touch you right now. I stretch my hands here. Everyone here, right now, take it now. Take it right now. Take it right now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands to you. Call this man, come. This big man, come. What's your name? Come now, let's hurry up. What's your name? The Lord is saying, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel, from where? From Edo State, sir. From Edo State. I mean, are you in Zaria? Zaria. You are in Zaria. I want you to rejoice because you have entered a new level this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As you celebrate them, you connect to their prophecy. Listen, because I'm seeing you in a cage. This is what I see. I've not started prophesying yet, but I'm seeing you in a cage and I'm seeing you telling the Lord, I know that if I come here, my situation will change. In the name that is above all names, I lay my hands upon you and I end that captivity right now. Take it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is grace? There's someone grace around here. Who is grace? I'm hearing that the Lord is showing me someone grace. Who is grace? Please come quickly. Let's save time. Come. Where is your mother? Zaria. Zango. Zango. Is she sick? Don't worry. Is your mother sick? She doesn't even know she's sick. 
but she's sick. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord going to your house and healing two people, your mother and your sister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your mother and your sister. What do you do? You're a student. What do you do? Huh? Applicant. Job applicant. Do you believe that if I pray for you, the Lord will give you a job? Will you come and testify before God's people? I lay my hands upon you and I release that job for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From this road down like this, there are a number of ladies with abdominal pain. Because I'm seeing like the angel of the Lord is giving something. I stretch my hands right now. Whoever they are, the power of God is coming upon them right now. Right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that pain, that abdominal pain must go. It must go right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me try to walk to the first overflow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. You will start experiencing the power of God in your life in a very strange way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I lay my hands upon you right now. Step into a new season. I want to pray for this overflow. There are so many people. Please believe God. Don't think I've come outside because I want to identify with you. So you don't think you are at a disadvantage. No. Distance is no barrier. Some of you are enduring cold. It's touching my heart. Talk more of the heart of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And some of you need to watch because what you are seeing me do is what you will be doing in some years to come. So just watch it. You are just receiving miracles. There is an impartation. Joseph. Who is Joseph? Here. Joseph. I'm hearing a name, Joseph. You are wearing like a collar, like for cold. Who is that? You are Joseph. The Lord is going to do mighty things through you. Stand up. There's cold so you don't enjoy yourself. Are you hearing me? I want to stay true with God and watch God do great things in your life. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing two old women. They are sitting on the same seat. Where are they? Here, this row. Two mama like this. Where are they? Is there some... Who is that? The Lord is asking me to talk to them. Just leave them. Mama, do I know you? Have we seen before? I'm looking at you. Can, can they... If they cannot hear, we can speak any language. Can I talk to you, Mama? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the spirit of death over your head. Don't be afraid. I'm seeing the spirit of death over your head. And the Lord is saying, if we don't pray for you, that's how you'll be getting up and a bike will collide with a car. It's like a station wagon and it will kill you for nothing. But the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. The second thing is there's no finances at all. Everything is flat. Is that true? Is that true in your life? Is what why you came? Where is your daughter? Do you have a daughter? Huh? I'm seeing a lady close to you, like a, a I don't know if she's a, a daughter or a logical or not, because I'm seeing the Lord is saying that He wants to bless her with marriage. You are the one, okay? You are the one standing close to her. Are you ready to marry? Because God is going to surprise you. Do you believe that? Huh? Say I, re I receive. I receive. You are not. You are. You are trying to be a lady, but my dear, prophecy. You see a madman like this. I'm only responding to God. Just shout and see what the anointing does. Shout, I receive as loud as I receive! Jesus Christ, I break that curse over your head. Mama, you will not die. All of you here, stretch your hands to her and say, Mama will not die. Take her as your mother. Pray for her. Mama will not die. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking at this other mama. I don't know what's wrong with this woman. But there are three things I see the devil want to do. Number one, eyes. Huh? But two, I'm seeing her inside a coffin. They have already closed it. And there's blood on top of the coffin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody used her eyes to make money with it. This is what the Lord is showing me. I'm not a prophet of doom. Me too like what I'm saying, but I cannot but say what God is asking me to say. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm seeing a lady here. I'm, I'm still going to come in, please. We're trying to work with the time, um, but I'm seeing a lady here. How you know is the power of God is about to come upon you right now. One of the ladies here. This is witchcraft that has destroyed the life 
of your family and the Lord wants me to minister to you in this other overflow. Father, wherever she is right now, locate her. The power of God is going to come on one lady right now. It will be like fire. You can't stand it. It will come upon you. Please, when that happens, let me know that lady right now. Not just those inside. I know God is inside, but this role, this role, Father, wherever that lady is, I'm declaring right now by the anointing of the Spirit of God that she will be located so that her can be free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, your name means joy. It's a tribal name, but it has joy. It's like it. Who is that person, please? Your name means joy. That's if you translate your name, it has something to do with joy. Joy or joyful or something like that. Do we have someone like that? Please make sure you are telling the truth so that it doesn't look like we're acting. If, if you are that couple with the protocol, who is that? What? Huh? Come. What's your name? What child means what? Child of joy. I want to pray for you. Where is your mother? She's in Kaduna. Is this working? Okay. Tell your mother her time will lay hands on you. And I want that if you go back and see your mom, just ask her to allow you to take a break too. My hands upon you right now. I don't mean their English names are Joy. What's, what's your name? your family Kaduna I'm going to pray for you because that has tied your family down I look at me look at me does it make sense to you the Lord is dead because I'm seeing your family tied down in witchcraft and God is saying that he's lifting them up by his grace father let it end right now out of this family right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I lay my hands on all of you I lay my hands on all of you. Your I lay my hands upon you. Help her, please. God. Help her so that she Who is that? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Please hold on. There is a lady wearing white scarf. She's on at the wall. She's leaning on the wall. Where is that lady? Please bring her. I'm seeing in a vision, there's a lady wearing white scarf. White scarf. Is there someone like that? You are leaning on the fence. White scarf. Who is that? Is there someone like that? Give God a praise. Who is that? What's your name? Favor. But there's nothing favorable in your life. And the Lord is saying, change her story. Do I know you, that your name is Favor? I want to pray for you. Do you believe if I pray for you, the Lord will grant you favor? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I restore favor to you right now. I restore favor to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, my dear. This lady, yes, come. Hallelujah. There is an anointing. Listen. There is an anointing. Um, I promise those of you outside, by the grace of God, hopefully by next miracle service, we'll try to work on amplifying the sound so that it will, it will be very clear for you outside. All right? I know that the people did their best, but you can see that the crowds are increasing. Praise the Lord. But there was an anointing that was upon Esther. It's called the favor anointing. In the course of the meeting, I'm going to be praying for people. But the Lord is saying I should minister this to you. Do you believe it? Huh? Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon this lady and I release this grace upon her. In the name of Jesus, I release this anointing upon her. In the name of Jesus, I release this anointing upon her. In the name of Jesus, who came from Kano? I'm seeing Kano. Come. You are not alone. You are with one lady. Where are you? Huh? Two of you. 
Husband and wife, come. Did you tell me you are coming? Come. She's your friend. Who is she? How are you, my dear? You came from Kano. What do you do? I'm sick. I, I'm, no, you are not just a student. There's something else you are doing. You teach it. You are teaching. How about her? Witchcraft is what God is breaking now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because I'm seeing something like a chain leaving your friend. I command that chain to leave right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you and I, I command that chain to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you I declare. You will step into a new dimension of intimacy with God. That's what you need. You have been praying. Even fasted. Help him. You fasted that God will give you an anointing. It's not an anointing for ministry. It's an anointing for fellowship with God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of 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 Jesus Christ. Look at me. What has happened to your music ministry? That's what the Lord is saying I should tell you. Huh? Do you sing? Sing something. Let's hear. My God is awesome. He will move the whole world. What has happened to your music ministry? God gave you an anointing. You have been playing games with it. Come. Because God wants to restore that fire. As soon as I pass you, I saw, I saw, I heard like music and God says restore his music ministry. There are three things that can destroy a man's ministry, any ministry. One, pride. Huh? Two, women or men or anything. Just human beings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then number three is premature exposure. When people don't stay with the spirit to create a track record. But I'm going to pray for you. Huh? you your characters, you, you, must, you must behave well. Behave like where you are going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is, you, you need a lot of restoration in your life. It's not because anything is wrong. You, it's just that you need to step up. Otherwise, you will not experience the grace of God. But there is an anointing upon your music ministry. And I lay my hands upon you right now. You step into that level in the name of Jesus Christ. All of you here, please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Please. Lift your hands and believe. As I pray for you, and I count three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. There are people here under yokes and spells. As soon as you shout that name Jesus, the anointing of the Spirit will move through this very overflow. This very overflow. I wanted to leave, but God is still speaking to me about this overflow. Please, I want you to believe. Help them so they don't fall inside the gutter. Father, I'm doing as you have instructed me. And I prophesy right now. That as they all shout the name of Jesus, let the power of God visit the foundations of every family represented here. Are you ready now at the count of three? One, two, three. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, help them, right now. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit from your life and your destiny. There is a, a man that appears to one lady here. As I pray for you now, fire is coming upon you. You will never see that man again, not in your dreams. I command him, go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit. It never comes to you again. Never, never. Never in the name of Jesus, greater strength, greater prayer fire, greater prayer fire, greater prayer fire in the name of Jesus. The lady with the black hat, tap that lady for me. Look at me, stretch your hands where you are. An anointing is coming upon you right now. Beauty for ashes, says the spirit. Beauty for ashes. I release that anointing upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before I leave this place, there are seven people. The spirit of prayer is coming upon you right now. 
Seven people, Lord, where are they right now? Right now, across this place. Seven people. It's like fire to come upon you. Some are men, some are women. Take it, take it, take it right now. Take it right now. The spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer, the spirit of prayer. Like never before. Tap this lady for me. The Lord is visiting you and he's wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying he's wiping your tears. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is wiping your tears. Let it end right now. Let it end now. Now. Never to return to you again. Never to return. I stretch my hands all over this room. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Every force of darkness never returns. In the name of Jesus, there is a spirit I'm dealing with. I know what I'm seeing right now, right now. I judge you by the God of heaven. Right now. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the hands of certain people tied here like a chain holding your hands those of you here just lift your hands don't worry once it constants you you cannot stand it father visit them right now you will feel like literally fire on your hands the chain is breaking right now i stretch my hands let it break 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 now 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 let it break i break it by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the holy ghost now I break that chain in the name of Jesus. I break that chain in the name of Jesus. I break that chain in the name of Jesus. I restore your glory. I restore your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, please pray and ask the Lord to visit you. Pray and ask the Lord to visit you. Aha, aha, you must go. In the name of Jesus, you must go, 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 go. Any spirit represented here, you must leave right now. I tell you, any force of darkness tying down your life. Who is this, Mama? Hold on, please. Hold on. Who is this, Mama? My brother. What's wrong with your marriage? This person I'm seeing was supposed to die October 21st. It's because of prayer. Because you used to carry this picture everywhere you go. I'm seeing you in a meeting. Stand up, madam. I'm seeing you in a meeting. No, 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 please. This is, help her with a handkerchief. This is a mother. You don't have to cry, please. This woman you are seeing is a very good woman. I'm seeing you in all kinds of meetings. You are not even concerned about your own problem. You are lifting up this person because I'm seeing 21st October. He was to be to die and please, Mama, it's okay. It's okay. The Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you too, you have problems. But you are not even concerned about your problem. You are not concerned about what is happening to your finances. You are not concerned about the pain in your back. You keep feeling pain in your back when you wake up. As I enter here. I hear my pain just go away. The pain just went away when she came here. Look at this. Even before the meeting. From Kaduna, me and my... Hold on. Okay. I'm all away from Kaduna. We, my children sleep with your, with your scriptures. We work with your scriptures. Even if I will go and pass you, read, the scriptures is on. The two of them are pastors. One is here. The other one is here. Finish university. Pray I'm a widow. Oh, yes. Hold on. Hold on. I have a ministry. <laughs> you have a ministry. My goodness. Can you imagine? I'm looking at you. What is, I'm seeing your ministry has something to do with spring. Spring. The spring. In the name that is above all names. Mama, listen. Please don't cry. The Lord is visiting you. Because this woman you see is an intercessor 
this woman can stay for hours praying for people who are not even it's none of her business as the holy spirit ministers to her you see but nothing is changing in your own life you pray for people and god will do miracle it's true. is that true the lord says i should tell you your whole life will change Amen. hallelujah please come follow me mama the lord is wiping Amen. are you hearing what i'm saying the lord is wiping your tears Who is this? Huh? Ah, mommy, this is not your son. Hold on. This boy is not your, you are calling him son, but he's not your son. Because I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing a father. Where's your father? He's dead, sir. Father is dead. And this is what the Lord, I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing father. It's like the father is related to you. He's my elder. And so you took him as your son. That's why you are calling him son. But this boy is not your son. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is going to use you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? Mommy, you, God is wiping your tears because this finance, the thing can't just enter your hand. It will enter and go out and we have to pray because the people that killed his father want to destroy you and we have to pray. I'm not, I don't want you to feel bad. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's gone and gone. But we are not just going to allow it happen until they come and kill mama and it's because of the destiny of this person are you hearing what I'm saying the Lord is going to visit you in a way that will surprise you what's wrong with you you see Ba what the Lord is showing me I'm not going to say everything here but what the Lord is showing me today they will see that he has one sickness they will do another test uh, they will do a scan and come out with something else. The devil is just playing, using medicine to play with your mind. This is witchcraft. They have already buried this person and this issue has finished. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm declaring and I'm speaking to everyone here. I stand under the anointing and I pray for you that every power that is tying down your family, it must leave you this night in the name of Jesus. <laughs> It must leave you this night. It must go, 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 go. The same thing, it must go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please come, madam. The Lord is saying I shall anoint you. Come. You are going to do great things for God. God is going to use you greatly. I know you may not think you are like that, but God will use you from today. I open your eyes to the realm of the spirit. You will step into unusual dimensions of grace. I activate dimensions in your spirit. Elisha prayed and the eyes of the servant was open. I open your eyes to visionary encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards our mother here. This woman's situation has really touched me. Come mama. No, no, no. Mommy, please stand up. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. All the way from Kaduna, a woman with a ministry interceding for others. This is our brother. The devil wants to terminate the life of this person. I'd like us to pray over this picture and say in the name of Jesus, the same power that raised Christ from the dead. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Mommy, will you believe if I tell you you are stepping into an unusual healing ministry from tonight, listen, you believe with all your heart. Have you forgotten the dream God showed you where you saw yourself in a meeting praying for people? I believe I saw it. So I remember. Did you tell me? It's, now is the time for that dream to come to pass. Because you had a dream. You saw yourself praying for people. I'm just praying, healing them. And you are healing them. And you have been interceding innocently. The Lord is telling me that now is the time for your ministry to step into another level. Two areas. The issue of barrenness. The issue of barrenness. It will be like a special anointing to destroy barrenness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will come back and testify before the people of God. This thing is being recorded. And the second area. The second area is HIV. 
such an anointing will come upon you as you pray for people with HIV. Listen, Paul said, I desire to see you. He said that I may impart some spiritual gift. It doesn't matter the age, impartation can happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying, madam? Hold my hands. I want you to shout Jesus and watch what begins to happen to you. Go ahead. Jesus. Father, I pray from today an anointing, an anointing, a transference of grace. An ordinary woman will become a woman of power from today. An ordinary woman will carry an anointing of the spirit in a strange way in a strange way go and heal the sick 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 in the name of Jesus Christ come madam look at me come watch this mommy lay your hand on him and pray for him just do what I'm asking you to do lay your hands and speak to him look at me you carry this anointing and you will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness anointing is not for show brothers and sisters but I tell you it will scare you this anointing will bring wealth to you people will sow into your life because of the impact in her life. Come on. Go, when you go back, lay this picture on your brother and pray for him. God will take him out of that hospital. And when he does, bring him here and he will come and testify to the glory of God. The Lord told me he's wiping your tears. Come, sir. What do you do? What do you do? What did you study? I'm going to pray for you. You want to further? Yes, sir. Political fight. Because God is going to use you in the area of leadership. It was in, in prayer, God put in your spirit to study political science. Amen. Although, what you study, um, I'm not seeing a university like a college or something. Federal College of Education. You study something that has to do with education. Business education. Business education. But then it's leadership. And God is taking you to that position. When you study it, it will make you a great leader. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. Wait, Mr. Man. Just wait. Let me finish. I'm praying for you. Make sure when God blesses you, you never forget this woman. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You never forget this woman. She has done what for you many people will not do. She has taken you as a son. She has spent her money to the last to help you. Is that true? If you forget this woman, God will not be happy with you. Let me use this as an encouragement. You see, when somebody suffers to help you and you rise, you will be a wicked person to forget that person. Some of us are like this. Some of our parents have labored to help us. Don't say, I must be a millionaire before I bless them. The day God gives you 20,000, you can take 1,000 and say, Mama, take. Some of us are very greedy. God is blessing you, but you are still latching onto the little resources of the parents. It must change. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, take him to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I impart upon you wisdom and leadership. Occupy that mountain. Fire is coming upon your hands. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Father, visit our mother. For what you have done, Mama, my God will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you from the depth of my heart. My God will visit you. In the name of Jesus. Please bring this woman for me. This one wearing this very one. Yes. This, she's, she's not feeling fine. Something is wrong with her. Please let her come. Is God blessing you tonight? Who brought her? Please, please, who brought her? If you brought her, please come with her so that we know. Yes, sir. What's wrong with her, Mama? Diabetes. Diabetes. 
How old is she? Do you know? Oh, you just met her. Or you know her. Okay, it's your junior sister. From where? Can she hear me? Or do you need somebody to talk to her in the language? You need translation. If I talk to you, can you talk to her in the language? Tell her that Jesus Christ is going to heal her of diabetes. What tribe are you, madam? Eh? He got her up as to Alpha now. Carry mic. What are you here? Oh, yeah, yeah, carry mic. Because I'm trying to, let's make this thing easy. Give him mic, please. Every tribe here, there must be somebody. There's nobody who lay hands on somebody for the purpose. There's no other mic. Okay, don't put it. Come, Pastor. Tell her that Jesus Christ is going to visit her. Jesus, What couldn't she do? Mama, as tell her I'm going to pray for her and the power of God will come to you. And me and her will run here now. I'm going to pray for her and we will not walk, we will run together. Tell her not to worry. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Diabetes, diabetes from her body. In the name of Jesus. If we do Jesus. Look at what is happening to her. It's a spirit. Look at, are you seeing this? Look at the spirit. You call it sickness. Look at what is happening. This is an old woman. Huh? Diabetes is a spirit. I command it to live now. In the name of Jesus. Out of her. Mama. Tell her. Tell her. That she's going to do what she has never done. And she should not be afraid. Tell her to walk. Tell her to walk. Tell her to walk. Walk. Come. Fast. Come. 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 Turn around. Turn around. Run. Run. Come. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Look at a miracle here. Look at this, look at this. Oh, come on. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Hold on. Sam, give us one powerful Igala song. Where is Sam? You sang one song during Annie's wedding. Eh? Sing that song. Tell Mama she's going to dance now. Eh? And Igala people will join her and dance to the shame of the devil. Hosanna, oh my David, oh Chonukawama, Hosanna, oh Hosanna, oh oh my David, oh Chonukawama, Hosanna, oh Hosanna, oh oh my David, oh Chonukawama, Hosanna, oh Hosanna, oh oh my David, oh Chonukawama, Hosanna, oh Hosanna, oh oh my David, oh Chonukawama, oh Hosanna. This miracle remains permanent forever.
How many? How many of you saw the way that woman was standing here? You saw the way she was standing. Look how God can change a man's story. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. There is a woman here that they brought. I don't know where she is. But I'm seeing it's, it's something that is a medical condition. I don't know if it's a fibroid or a growth. Please, who is that person? We really have to be fast. A growth, like a, I don't know if it's a growth that the person came with. They, they said the person has something like a growth. I don't know if it's a fibroid now. Whether it's... Eh? No, no, no. The person I'm talking about is here. It may be inside or outside. I'm seeing somebody. Um, it's like there's a medical condition that has to do with a swelling or growth or something. Who is that? Who is that person? Come. No, you're on, you are not sick. It's, it's demons. Just stand. We'll deal with that one now. Now, your, eh? No, no, no. Leave him. This your stomach is swollen. They want to kill you. Somebody, somebody hit you with something in a dream some months back. You didn't even remember. Now your stomach is swelling. We'll deal with that one. I don't know you. I'm just just stand there. That one is, is an easy something. This come, the come. You have a problem. Come up. The devil. I, the devil wants to destroy this lady. Because if I don't pray for you, they will, I'm seeing your case getting so serious. They will now take you to India for a kidney transplant. What's wrong with you? Kidney left. The, left right. What does that mean? lie down here. Yes, I need to be yes. I sleep straight. You see the wickedness of the devil? That even to sleep, you can't sleep this way. You can't sleep. How, how else do you sleep? Lie down flat. That devil must leave you. What's your name? You know how? Who knows her? Before you now start talking another rubbish story. Daddy, please come, sir. Our, our daddy, yes, sir. Our daddy is praying a prayer, and the prayer has to do with no. The hold your photo like this, sir. Open it to the third one. That's what I want to talk to you about. One, okay. I'm seeing. Okay, I thought it was the third one, but I'm seeing another photo. This thing is like it's supposed to be three. It's not two. Where is the third one? That's the one I want to talk about. That's why I said take it to the third one. You brought two here. But the person I want to talk about, there is a third one. Who is in that photo? Henry, the bachelor's boy. Henry. Because we want to pray. Demons stop him from coming. Did you ask him to come? I asked him to come. Too soon to. That's what I'm saying. If that boy had come, let me tell you, do you know that if 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 you can come for koinonia alone you don't want to know the powers you overcame to arrive tell somebody koinonia and see the way demons fight they are coming here flimsy excuses they will tell you uh, i just think i don't have this is because the devil knows he knows that's what happened to this person and you see today would have been his day of visitation i looked at this and i saw three because i'm not you may see me looking at you physically but i'm operating from the spirit i saw three pictures and i said go to the third one you left the third one at home just like the person to come if he agreed the holy ghost would have reminded you and forced you to carry the third one see please brothers and sisters when you invite people and they refuse don't insult them you're a spiritual man you should know that is to you a sign that God wants them to be here. Are we together now? Daddy, I'm going to talk to you now and I'll pray with you. There's something about him, but I will not tell you in public. Huh? So that you will not hear that this person left the faith into something else. You hear what I'm saying? I don't want, it's not something where this is a public talk. But you, you don't want to hear that kind of story because it's already happening. 
there is a spirit that converts men. It doesn't happen by default. You must attach it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is this? Uh, Lord? Come. We are going to pray for this kidney. Both of your kidneys. It's verified that you have a, a kidney problem. So we are going to pray. Lay your hands on it. Please, can we pray for this dear one? Anything that happens to one of us happens to all of us. Don't say it's not yet my issue. Uh -uh. Pray for her. Your prayer is working. There's a surgery the Lord is doing. Place your hand on her. I command that devil right now out out of her that spirit masquerading as kidney kidney problem in the name of Jesus Christ I command a miracle for you right now I stretch my hands I make contact by the anointing of the Holy Ghost my goodness, there's such power flowing. I declare a miracle. I declare a miracle. I declare a miracle. Stand up. Stand up. What couldn't you do before? Press it. Press it right now. Look, the lady, see, see, the lady is even surprised. Even her, her and her own body, she's even surprised that something is happening. Her and her own body, I pray that God will anoint you to be able to bring healing and deliverance to people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know how cheap the devil is until you are really anointed. If you are not anointed, you will make a ceremony out of nothing. But when that anointing, it's not about trying to get it done. If it's there, it's there. If it's not there, it's not there. My dear, check it. Honestly, if there's pain, tell us. We will not be afraid. There's... God is touching another lady. Heal her, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Fire is coming on a lady's throat. I don't know what has to do. I'm about to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing throat right now. There is a lady like that. Fire is coming. Something will touch your throat. It's like a sickness. My dear, I like you to shout, I am healed. Shout it. Shout it again. Shout it one more time. Go and check yourself and you come back to testify. In the name of Jesus, King Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The anointing is on that lady covering her, her mouth, her nose. This lady, I don't know who she is. I'm not, yes, that very lady you are holding. There's a strong anointing on her. Strong anointing on her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strong anointing on her. We're going to be very fast. Because it's cold and we have to. There's one of the ushers. The power of God is coming on you now. I know you are doing ushering work wherever you are. I'm seeing an usher. Please bring that person right now. An usher lady. Right now. You are busy doing your work quietly. But the anointing of God will land on you right now. Where's the usher? Please bring her. You are an usher. You are doing your work. That's alright but. God needs to visit you now. That you are working, whether ushering or protocol, you mind your business. There's somebody in welfare, welfare. The power of God is coming on somebody in welfare right now. Welfare department, welfare department. I'm seeing an anointing coming on somebody in welfare department. 
God just does strange things. They are called signs and wonders. We really don't know why it's done. Before we continue, there's one person from protocol. That's what I see in the spirit. Protocol department. The protocol department. There's somebody that the Lord is touching right now. In protocol department, wherever you are, I really don't care where, whether inside or outside. But God is touching somebody right now. Right now in protocol department. It's like fire. It will just come on you all of a sudden. It's a sign and a wonder. It's a miracle. Please let me have those people out. There's a reason why I'm calling them out. That person from Oshri. Who is that? Protocol department. Where's the person? Hallelujah. Bring three of them. It's a prophetic language. I want to tell you what God is saying through this. The first impartation is God prophesying to men that you are entering into new seasons. So just like an usher brings you, it's a prophetic word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release it upon you. I release it upon you right now. Just like an usher takes you into a new level. I stand under this anointing and I prophesy enter a new season. Enter a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. The impartation upon the welfare person is the mystery of supplies. The Lord is saying he's ending stagnancy. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is ending stagnancy. In the name of Jesus Christ. The person from the protocol, the Lord is saying, I will be your defender. Even in this season, I release that word upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone that came with a sick person. Um, it's already happening to Pastor Femi. But Pastor Femi and three members of Rema will come under the anointing right now. Three members who are members of Rema Chapel. That's what I'm seeing as it's happening to him. It's happening to three people. Three people who attend Rema Chapel. Three people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. It's a new season for you. New season for you. New season for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to bring them out. Just leave them where they are. Hallelujah. We have five minutes to do this five minutes because there is the session where I prophesy. Please make sure we are going to try to finish fast but make sure you receive everything. Don't come and waste your time and stay. Now all those who came with sick people apart from those who have been healed, if you brought somebody sick, please bring them out quickly. Quickly, let's lay hands on them. Give us. Please, quickly. The Lord is healing people. There's the healing anointing in this place right now. God is a miracle worker. God is a miracle worker. Please, quickly. No matter which of the overflows, brothers and sisters, there is multiplied grace in this house. Don't come and go back sick. You just need a touch. It's, it's just a touch. There's no need for any long story. So you don't necessarily have to be saying this, what is wrong with me if I don't ask you. Just a touch. Even if you are coming here for the first time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those of us who are out here, Jesus loves you. That's why he wants to heal you. Please, I want you to receive. You can reject it, but I want you to receive it with all your heart. As I pray for you, you go back, check yourself. Because of time, we may not have time to share testimony, but hold on, please. Let me say something about testimonies. Um, it is, you are robbing God of glory when God gives you healing and blessings. There are so many people who God has been touching, but they never return. To give thanks. One of the ways you maintain your miracle is by giving thanks. Please come. Your breakthrough has come. Yes, please, madam, come. 
the Lord is bringing a visitation to you right now. Don't put her up. Just keep her somewhere because the anointing is still on her. And so that she doesn't keep collapsing up and down. Look how many people are trusting God for healing. Ma, please look at me. God is restoring you financially, spiritually. Financially, there is an anointing on you as I speak to you. Financially, spiritually. I'm seeing God step even into your marriage. Our mother is crying. Your marriage. This is the reason why you came. Because there's nothing there. God is stepping in to do a miracle for you. To the glory of his name. Miracle for you. Who is this? Your mom. What's wrong with her? Why didn't you bring her here? Yola. Yola. Hold the picture. Just hold it. I'll use you as a point of contact. Hold it with both of your hands. The power of God will come through the picture to you and will touch her right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your healing power touch mama. She's in your lab, but touch her, oh God. Right now, in the name of Jesus. God is also bringing speed into your life. Speed, right now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Speed! I prophesy it upon you. Never to be the same again. And we pray for healing for mama. You will testify in the name of Jesus. The anointing is so strong on you. God is bringing restoration in your marriage. God is bringing restoration in your finances. God is bringing restoration in your spiritual life. I command everything the devil has stolen to give way. In the name of Jesus. There are so many people here and we are going to be very fast. Just in touch. Please, I want you to believe. If you are standing in for somebody, you can agree with them. As you go back, you can touch them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe we'll be very fast in the name of Jesus. All over the congregation, I want you to begin to pray in tongues because immediately after this, we'll be prophesying. While you are praying in tongues, pass your prayer request. Both the one for souls and then your prayer request. Please pass it. So ushers, you can split yourself inside and outside. Someone attend to those in the overflows. Please, very quick. Thank you, Jesus. Let your power touch your people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A glorious God. A miracle right Hold on, let me attend to this gentleman. I promise that we'll look at him. Everybody look if you can look at it from your screens or wherever. You see that when you look at this guy, this is unusual. This is abnormal, right? How long has it been, my brother? Since last year. What happened to you? Uh, the, uh, I am, I'm just sick. I don't know what is happening to me. So I went to the hospital they said I should go and do scanning they say my spleen don't don't beat my spleen don't beat so later on what is that the spleen is an organ that reserves blood just below the wheat on the left side that is a cancer is disturbing me cancer cancer of what now that I'm still there for this hospital for this uh, shika. So they never told me for cancer for what was still. Who told you about this place? It's my friend. May God bless that friend forever. In the name of Jesus. My brother, look at me. Do you believe Jesus can touch you? I believe Jesus. Love Jesus. I love Jesus. Born again. I'm born again, sir. You are serious with Jesus. Yes, sir. Very, very serious. Very serious. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Do you think he would just watch you just die like that? Do you believe this is weak for your stomach to be swelling? If you have a child and you have the power to help that child and you see the child's stomach swelling like that, will you smile and tell him continue and die? Is that love? So I want you to know that this thing, God has no hand in it. This is the devil. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. Lay your hands on your stomach. Don't let the name cancer scare you. You understand it is because of what you have heard the conditioning in your spirit that has made you feel that is cancer uh, and made you feel it is destructive 
there is the life of God. It's called Zoe. The very life of God. And I want to pray to you. You believe that? You want to kill that cancer and it must leave your body so that you will not die. I believe that like every other person, you have your plans and aspirations. And this is already threatening you to cut short your life. Huh? Are you married? Where's your wife? Because I'm seeing your wife crying. Your wife is already thinking now and saying that this is how my husband will die. And I'll have to start looking for another man to marry me. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Father, do a miracle for this brother. We know that cancer is a spirit. In the name of Jesus, cancer, die. Die. In the name of Jesus. The condition for your disappearance in this body, we bring them to place. And I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus that this cancer will die and it will leave your body forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will return and you will testify. Make sure you testify when God gives you a breakthrough. What's your name? Sarah. Oh, Sarah. So make sure you testify in the name of Jesus Christ. I worship forever, I worship forever, I worship forever, Lord. I worship forever, I worship forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're getting into the most important Please, those outside, can we rise? This is a very prophetic moment. Hallelujah. This is a very, very serious moment. The requests here contain the names of loved ones. I want you to know that everyone is an evangelist this year. There is, there is need for massive salvation. The Lord spoke to me and said he's trusting that he will find the people who will bring souls this year like never before and I told him I said Lord I'm available so make sure that from now till December you don't come alone we, we are on a mission not just to ease ourselves of the guilt of not being soul winners it's serious business hallelujah please those who are yet to submit the names of their loved ones that you are trusting God for them to be saved and then our requests very quickly we have a few minutes now we're going to do it in this order the moment let me make an altar call before we pray for this so we can conserve our time there are people here hear me first overflow second overflow across the road 
Listen. There are people here, probably you were invited, and you know that you need to make your ways right with Jesus. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he so loved you, and he demonstrated that love by giving his all, his one and only begotten son. Please, by the way, I don't want you to miss the series we're starting next week. We're taking a series on the gospel. We're going to be examining who Jesus is and the message that he brought. What is the content in the gospel that really saves men? So, this is profound. We preachers have been distracted teaching people on restoration and demons. We need to get back and let people understand who Jesus is. What message did he bring? And why is it very powerful? Where are we really going with all this Christianity thing? So, it's a powerful series. You don't want to miss it. We'll be having that all through February. Praise the Lord. It will rattle the foundation of your understanding about God. And we'll be walking in exchange. Hallelujah. For instance, let me give you a little preview. Um, the message of Jesus, when he came, his message was just one word. Repent. That's all Jesus said. Repent. So we're going to be checking what does it mean to repent. Does it mean to come and emotionally answer a, a, a poem? To repeat after the man of God, what, what is the what is the jurisdiction of that word repent? Hallelujah. So this is very, very important. I'm going to make an altar call now. And while the people march forward, please clear the way for them. We'll stretch our hands and be interceding first for souls. Leave the issue of your needs. We're going to intercede. You wrote their names, you know, call them by their names and say, Lord, we receive their salvation. If you save me, you can save them. You don't want to watch your family members in hell. And they are calling on you and saying, you know me. We came out from the same womb, but some of them, we know that they are going to hell. There's no confusion about it. God is a God of love. We'll be learning next week. But then the truth is, there is hell. Don't let anybody deceive you. There is a place called hell. There are people there right now. Praise the Lord. You are here. You need to make your ways right with God. You've been hearing preachers talk again and again. Outside. Inside. You probably are making this decision for the first time seriously in your life. Or you've been answering many altar calls. You don't even know how many. And you don't know the name of what you have been doing. And tonight you are saying, I really want to come out and make a decision. Or you have even given your life to Christ. You are a pastor. You are, you know, functioning the body of Christ. But you know that you need a, a rededication of your life. Things happen around your life, discouragements, God didn't answer your prayer, and it made you to derail out of the way of the Lord. Those two categories of people. I'm going to count one to five. Please, for time's sake, for time's sake, wherever you are, leave your seat and run like there's fire on the mountain, especially for those outside. One, quickly, God bless you. God bless you. Don't, don't fight it. Win that war tonight. There are so many people coming from outside. No matter how far, don't say it's too far. Make your way to Jesus. God bless you. One. Two. Keep coming, please. Don't stop. Don't let your friend, don't let anyone stop you. This is a destiny decision. You have seen the power of God. You have seen the grace of God. You know that he loves you. That he allowed you to come for koinonia tonight. It's a sign that he loves you and he has great plans for you. Make your way to the front very quickly. While they come, keep coming, please. Stretch your hands towards this request and begin to pray in tongues, please, everybody. Pray in tongues first for the salvation. Forget about your prayer request. Please keep coming. You know you need to be out here. No matter how long it will take, please make your way to the front. No matter what you have done, Jesus loves you and he can give you a new beginning. So make your way to the front. Stretch your hands and let's pray on this request. All of you that are inside, just stretch your hands as a point of contact. Those outside, stretch your hands towards the screen and let's pray. Shegata prada gada balada bash. Mam broto koto posho to prada gada balada bash. Raga da barato koso to prada gere 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 bosh. Shekapa bakata balada bash. Shekapa roko to posh. Mante kroto skobara balash. Lord, we pray for every soul. Every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul in this place. Lord, save them. 
some of them are not even Christians. Save them to the uttermost. Young and old, we receive their salvation. Give them dreams, give them encounters. You died for them, they must not go to hell. You have great plans for them. They need to experience the love of Jesus. We intercede for their souls. We intercede for their souls. We intercede for their souls. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, save our fathers, save our mothers, save our brothers, our classmates, our colleagues in the office. In the name of Jesus, our families, no matter how far they are from the cross, bring them to meetings, give them encounters. Holy Spirit, we permit your ministry in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now begin to pray over your request. Lay your hands over your request by faith and say, Lord, I turn it into a testimony. Go ahead and pray. I turn it into a testimony. I turn it into a testimony. I turn it into a testimony. Father, give your people testimonies, breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, we bring this before your altar. Give your people manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies. In the name of Jesus, manifold testimonies by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, we pray for every soul represented here. We release angels of salvation wherever they are in the name that is above all names. We authorize these angels to hunt for their souls. They will know no peace till they find the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ, we release dreams we release visions of Jesus. We release encounters with the world. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere they turn to, they will hear the gospel. They will hear it in church. They will hear it in class. They will hear it everywhere. For those who have vowed that they will not give their life to Christ. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we we place their stubbornness side by side with the blood of Jesus and we declare that their souls must be saved and not only saved, they will be saved added to the church and established in righteousness in the name of Jesus Lord we pray for these requests Lord right here are humanly speaking impossible situations but lord as i walk upon them they become testimonies as i walk upon them they become testimonies and lord your people will stand to testify in the presence of everyone healings and miracles and breakthroughs and salvations and restorations in the name of the lord jesus christ now, those of you who are making this decision for Jesus Christ, I love you from the depth of my heart and I thank you for coming out to accept Jesus Christ. It's a very noble decision. Hallelujah. There's no need to feel as if you are going to hellfire. It's an exciting thing because it looks natural, but it is supernatural in every way. Lift your right hand and say this after me. I'm just guiding you, but it's, it's, it's the truth from your heart that really sets you free. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart.
Some of you, as you are praying, you will literally feel things leaving you as you are praying. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and I am the life. Say after me again, Lord Jesus, I believe in you and I love you with all my heart. I accept that I cannot help myself and I ask you tonight, save me, cleanse me in the name of Jesus. Everything in me that is not from you, I command to leave me right now. I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit i'm a child of god my goodness i sense such heavy anointing of the holy spirit even just right here in the altar right here i'm sensing that there is such a strong anointing ministering to people ministering to people something is entering you in the name of the lord jesus christ those who are getting born again as you are getting born again some of you are getting filled with the holy ghost instantly instantly because i see the power of god coming on some of you in the name of jesus say after me from today i'm a child of god the life of god is in me i will never be the same in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit may you become mighty men and women of the spirit in the name of jesus may god do great and mighty things in and through your life I really pray for you from the depth of my heart. May you never go back to the systems of this world again. May the Holy Spirit guide you. May he instruct you and teach you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you be established in righteousness. In Jesus name I pray. May God bless you. I'd like you to follow the lady waving her hands. She will have your details. And I promise that we'll send you a text and we'll follow you up. May God bless you. In Jesus name follow the lady very quickly. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please everyone stand. Everyone stand. I want to speak over your life now and please, I want you to pay attention. Those outside, this is when everybody gets to receive something mighty upon their lives. I believe in the power of prophecy. I believe in its ability to change the course of your life. Please let's prepare the announcement quickly so that We have seen in this house what God has done with prophecy. When Pastor Alpha came up here, he was admonishing us and he told us, he said, you don't just believe in the Lord, but you believe in the prophets that he has called. This is not human worship. It's an election of grace. God sends men and anoints them with apostolic and, and prophetic mantles and graces. Because he wants to use the words through them to step into your life and destiny. There will be radical change as I, I prophesy over your life. Lift your hands. Jesus. Inside and outside, lift your hands. The power of God is strong. I already feel like fire on my hands. I speak over your life a dimension of speed you have never seen a dimension of speed you have never seen receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ receive it right now in the name of Jesus inside and outside let a mantle come on you for supernatural speed in the name of Jesus spiritual blindness everything covering your eyes from accessing insight in the word of God you need insight your life is at the mercy of the spiritual insight you have I'm praying for you like a veil torn from a man's eyes I command that veil to be torn right now I command that veil to be torn right now I command that veil to be torn right now I speak against the spirit of limitation that force from hell it allows you to move forward but it will say you will not cross this border in the name that is above all names I come under this anointing this night and I command whatever limit you have seen in your life I break it tonight 
I break that limit tonight in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every strange dream every spiritual encounter of the night that is not orchestrated from heaven every visitation of demons they appear as animals they appear as men as women they appear as all kinds of things seeing yourself in primary school wearing all kinds of things i don't care what it is in the name that is above all names i command judgment upon those spirits now i command judgment upon those spirits now every voice that calls you forth in your sleep and programs tragedy over your destiny the bible was not it didn't leave us in darkness as to what happens when men sleep i pray whatever calls you forth in your sleep and reprograms your destiny so that you wake up into tragedies by the blood of jesus i attack those enchanters i challenge their enchantment in the name of jesus christ I pray for you prosperity like you have never seen a dimension of wealth like you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus I pray upon you the same way favor can come on a man like a mantle you can carry it you can know you are carrying help that guy please see this will come on people seriously this ministry has enjoyed a level of inexplainable favor. I'm praying for you. From that which has come upon this ministry, let it come upon your life right now. I release that favor in the name of Jesus. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive that favor. Receive that favor. Hallelujah. I pray for you. And Jabez was more honorable. Listen, honor is not just age. Honor is a mantle. God can, is a distinguishing anointing that sets you apart. And men not only recognize your difference, but they celebrate it. I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, from today, an unction comes upon you. A strange grace that makes men to celebrate who you are and what you carry believe me when i say this i pray for you inside and outside from the depth of my spirit that mantle of honor that distinguishing anointing receive it in the name of jesus i pray for your families every project that has refused to be completed i don't care what it is the bible says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i'm praying for you whatever has experienced stagnancy in your family i supply spirit power and i command it to start moving forward in the name of jesus christ every uncompleted project hear the word of the lord tonight I command you to be completed in the name of Jesus. I've said it again and again that the next level of your life is a destiny help I way. Listen, listen. I have seen in my life and I have enjoyed the strange ministry of destiny helpers. Brothers and sisters, God does not need 20 people to change your life. One correct person can just step into your life there was a man who some friends insisted he must be healed they carried him and tossed somebody's zinc and brought him to those are not friends they are destiny helpers my god in the name of jesus i don't know where they are who must appear in your life between now and february but in the name that is above all names i speak to the north i speak to the south I speak to the east. I speak to the west. 
destiny help us come forth now come forth now financial help us come forth now marital help us come forth now academic help us come forth now career help us come forth now if there are no human beings to occupy that position angels must appear in human bodies and perform that role i pray for you the lord told us this year is a year of multiplied grace and influence i want you to go back and meditate on it you already see what is happening in the house the house has entered another dimension and everybody who cares has entered that dimension i pray for you i don't know what level of grace you have been functioning in but i pray listen to what i'm about to tell you in the name of jesus whatever dimension of grace you have seen right now i stand under this apostolic anointing i multiply that grace upon your life i multiply that grace i multiply that healing power I multiply that deliverance power. I multiply that grace for favor. I multiply that teaching anointing. I multiply your influence. Where you could not have gone by now, I pray by the wings of the spirit, may you be carried to strange dimensions of influence. Where your business has not gotten to, where your certificate could not have entered in the name of jesus i expand your spiritual borders and i compel influence in your life in the name of jesus christ when you open your mouth to call for help i force your words to enter the ears of an helper in the name of jesus christ i say it again koinonia that if you dare open your mouth to cry for help, I declare, may that word not die till it enters the ears of your helper. I speak to the elements of creation. I compel them to come in alignment with your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, I use the earth as a point of contact. Every human being works on the earth. I speak that anywhere the earth sees you let it compel favor for you some of you may not understand what i'm doing just believe me job said for out of the earth comes bread i command the bread that is buried for your destiny in the earth i call it out in the name of jesus christ i don't know the desires of your heart but i'm praying that between now and the next miracle service that you will come and stand before the people of God and testify to the might of God. Everything that has brought tears out of your family, I judge it right now. Every career person, listen to me, we are forcing promotion this year. Don't say it cannot happen, you will fool yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look, in the name that is above all names the mystery of lifting may it come upon your life every student here your cgpa has ears and i want to speak to it in the name you had the testimony of that gentleman he didn't even complete the testimony he sent me the text he was praying for 0.11 and that's exactly what he got 0 0.11 and it brought him to 3.50 i pray for you in the name of jesus especially for those who are just starting 100 level you will start with a mysterious gpa that will shock people i pray for those who have tried and tried but your academics is just spooking you you have done all you know to do i bail you out of it this night in the name of Jesus Christ, I bail you out of it this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you. 
I must pray for your spiritual life. Encounters that you have never had. Listen. You need encounters in your life. You need encounters. You hear people like Bishop Oyedeko mention encounters and what he transmitted in them. I pray strange encounters with the spirit of God, with the word of God that will launch your destiny to another dimension. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing dies in your hands. I say it again. Nothing dies in your hands. Those who came from far, I prophesy to you. You left all and paid the price to come. Carry an unction that will shock all that know you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will go back to your campuses. You will go back to your job. You will go back to your homes. With a mysterious anointing that will distinguish you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare that the miracles begin in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.